Good evening, boys and girls, and welcome to episode, <clears throat> excuse me, 78 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilais, coming to you live from YouTube. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you are tuning in live, let me just go onto the tablet and make sure that I am coming through. Fingers crossed we're not going to have any issues today with the technology. Seems to be fine. Uh, wherever you are, uh, please uh, let me know that you have tuned in. Uh, keep comments and things coming. Um, I will acknowledge all of them after we've done our first perfume and I will also tell you what today's uh, hour-long episode or just under an hour-long episode is going to be all about in case you haven't figured it out already. That has been annoying me for the last few minutes already as I've been getting ready. Never mind, we shall just do our best to try to ignore it. And I should also have said, instead of saying good evening, I should have said... Um, here we go, Avignon versus Kyoto. I think some people have already worked out what this episode is about. I should also have said Namaste because I would like us to get into a meditative frame of mind. That is what this video is about. So let us start as we mean to go on and smell a perfume. I just need to ignore that, don't I? Let us start with this. This is going to set the tone. This is from Armani Privé, a scent from 2004. And th this is where I'm going to stumble a little bit. I, I, I noticed somebody saying hello from Paris. I am going to acknowledge all your comments in a second. Can somebody please tell me here, in the case of this word, the, the French word for incense, do we follow the kind of the, the, the vague rule that final letters in French are very rarely pronounced or not? So is this, is this bois d'encens or is it bois d'encens? And don't just say yes because then I won't know what you mean. So just write and say, if Lynn Smells is here as well, she'll know. So just say, you know, either say silent S or not. Anyway, this is Incense Wood, Bois d'Ensemble bon d'Ensens, from 2004, from Armani Privé, uh, composed by the one and only Michel Almarac. We may have something else from uh, him later in, in, in the broadcast. I'm going to spray it because this is essentially what today's episode is going to be all about. Let me try and pop that where. Sure. You look Indian today. Well, <laughs> thanks for the compliment. Let me, let me um, pop that there. Okay. Uh, here we go. <sighs> Somebody's silent S in ensemble, je pense. Well, <laughs> Je pense isn't good enough. I need to, I need to know je sais, you know. Um, okay, this is, this is a fantastic, beautiful, probably one of the best um, frankincense compositions. And that is what we are about today. What I'm going to present to you in the next hour is my top 10 favorite incense perfumes. And, and I, I think we need to establish at the beginning that when I say incense, I mean frankincense. Usually when we say incense in perfumery, we, we mean frankincense. When we say incense out in the normal world, we actually mean all sorts of things that you can burn, you know, like incense sticks that may, be, um, uh, that, that may have all sorts of different perfumes on them. But in perfumery, incense nearly always means frankincense. In fact, I'm trying to think of an occasion where it might not mean frankincense. Um, and one of my favorite notes in perfumery, which was one reason why I wanted to do a sort of best of video on incense with you today, but also in light of the current situation, that I always reach for incense perfumes when I want to induce a, a meditative state of mind. And that was um, that's no coincidence. Um, as, as we know, incense, frankincense has been used in religious ceremonies for, you know, centuries. For, for a lot of people, it is it is the smell of the Catholic Church or the sort of Eastern Orthodox churches, maybe not so much Protestant churches, Anglican churches, um, but, but not, not just Christianity. It isn't just Christianity that uses incense, of course. Um, incense is a massive part of Japanese culture. And, and I think now we know that... Uh, um, Frankincense slows down the heart rate to some extent and actually induces or helps to induce a meditative, contemplative, calming state of mind. And I thought uh, that, that's, that, that's what we could do with at the moment, something to help us reflect and maybe zone out from the rest of the world for a little while. Um, 
and you really, really cannot do much better than this one from 2004, as I said, composed by Michel Aronaic, because it, it, it seems to be a perfect showcase of incense as a note. Um, by the way, thank you very much for these comments that are coming through. I'm absolutely going to acknowledge them in a moment, but I'll just talk about this one and then, and then move on. So please keep them coming. I'm not ignoring them at all. Um, frankincense has, has its own particular qualities, its own particular attributes. To me, it has a pronounced um, lemony uh, scent, a sort of citrusy scent. It also smells quite mineralic, quite flinty. It has a sort of chalky feel to it, maybe even a little bit dusty. Obviously, it also becomes quite woody, smoky. All of those, all of those aspects come into uh, incense, and what associations you make with it obviously will will um, will depend on you. Because of my upbringing, I do have associations with uh, Catholic churches, but not just. I also have associations with you know burning incense in the home in a sort of more Middle Eastern way. Um, it, it would be interesting actually to know what your some of the associations you would make are, and also what some of your favourite incense perfumes are. And this is this this literally is just sort of incense on a plate, if you like. And apparently, uh, this perfume contains only five ingredients, um, which well, I wouldn't be surprised if if that is actually true. We've we've got another one coming up which has a very, very small number of materials as well. And I think that I think this this has got the vetiver, cedar. I wouldn't be surprised if there's something aldehydic in there. Um, incense is 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 an is a tricky note to pull off well, I think. Um, and while I was preparing my top ten, again, trying not to overthink it, which was really, really hard, really trying not to overthink it, I made a remarkable sort of discovery or I had a sort of light bulb moment um, something that I hadn't considered at all about my some of my favorite incense perfumes until today uh, when I went through the list and I'll talk to you about that I'll, I'll tell you what I mean perhaps when we're a, when we've we're, we've done about five or six because then it'll make sense but one thing that's very very curious about incense perfumes is that um, the more realistic they feel in, so, in other words, the more they really do actually feel like burning the incense resin or, you know, walking into a church and smelling the incense, the, the more authentic they feel, uh, the, 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 the less they seem to last. Um, and I think that's something to do with the note. You know, it, 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 it isn't a note that sticks around, you know, as long as, as, long as say, sandalwood and musks. And that seems to be the kind of um, the balance that perfumers always try to achieve. The, the, the more long-lasting the incense perfumes seem to be, um, the less authentic they seem to sm smell to me, or they have lots of other things happening around them and they're more sort of symphonic and more composed. Um, and so maybe, you know, they, they could be very, very interesting incense, so, sorry, they could be interesting perfumes in their own right, but maybe not necessarily incense perfumes or perfumes that you want to go to to get an incense hit. Um, and the ones that I would like to present to you today, the other nine, approach the problem in lots of different in, in interesting ways. There are there are at least a couple of outliers, so you know maybe I'm looking down here, maybe two perfumes that you wouldn't necessarily expect to be put forward on a list of incense perfumes, and yet I wear them because I like the incense aspect to them. So having said all of that, this just this is really gonna bug me. I don't know why it bugs me, but it bugs me. This, this, I get a little bit, do I get OCD about my hair? I don't get OCD about my hair, I get OC. Obsessive compulsive, but not a disorder. I can live with it, I can, I can live with that, uh, trust me. So, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Uh, please leave a comment, ask a question if you're watching after the live broadcast. Um, the last time I checked, I had got to the 2,500 subscriber mark, so yay, thank you very much everybody, and then somebody obviously unsubscribed and I went down to 2,499, so I don't know what's happening at the moment, but I, but you know, I, I, there's going to be some fluctuation, I suppose maybe I annoyed somebody and they unsubscribed, um, but uh, let's go through the comments, because there have been loads, gosh, it's going to take me ages to read through all of these, but thank you very much. Hello from France, says Raph, you got the first comment today. Hello from Paris, Avignon versus Kyoto, says uh, Joao. Q George says hello, Umberto, hello. Muddy says hello, I don't remember a Muddy before. Claire Lee says hello, Claire Lee, who's that? <laughs> um, 
Einspiff says hello. Serapio says hello. Hello from Virginia to Catherine. Uh, sorry, from Catherine. Eve Spider Smell says hello. I had to click. I love incense and fragrance. Well, of course you had to click. What's your favorite incense perfume? Rizwan says hello. You look Indian today. Well, this is, you know, it's trying to be meditative. And this was actually a, a memory of a happier time two years ago when we were actually in, in India. And I think I bought this. Did I buy it in Lucknow or maybe I bought it in Calcutta? I can't remember. Uh, bonjour from Paris, Chang. Uh, silent S in Anson. We had that. Hi from Bucharest. Hello. Lovely shirt, says Serapio. Thank you very much. Greetings from a stormy midnight in lockdown Malaysia, says Peggy. Wow. Uh, no need to pronounce the S, says Raf. Brilliant. Hello from a Welsh girl in Zagreb, says Kerry. Um, my man, says 87 Linseed. Cool. A uh, beautiful shirt. Thank you very much. Uh, again, another vote for Ensemble without the S. Okay, brilliant. Serapio, I missed which Armani that was. Was it Bois d'Ensemble? Yes. Uh, Peggy, uh, one of the gifts from the key Three Kings of the Orient. Absolutely. Maria, hi. Hello. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, Anne Kalhar says, will you review Oud Rosewood? Now, all I know about this, and, and thank, that's the, thanks to one of you, is that that's a new Dior. I know nothing else about it. I haven't got it. Um, so at the moment, I have to say, no, I, I don't think I'll be reviewing it. Um, I think I think the number of new releases actually gonna, is, is going to start slowing down. So it's probably going to be harder and harder to get new releases. Uh, Q George says, Cardinal by James Healy is the first frankincense I smelt and became a big fan of the genre ever since. Uh, Linz uh, smells is saying hello. Hello from Bulgaria. Rachel, what a lovely surprise. Um, uh, 87 Linseed, I don't understand what that means. <laughs> Hello from Latvia. Nice shirt, says Shimon. Ashfaq says Dakar reporting my leash. Thanks for tuning in, Ashfaq, always. Uh, sniffy sniff, I get too much ISOE from Wadonson, but otherwise I really like it. Fair enough. Favorite incense commercial, uh, Loewe 7, says 87 Linseed. Ashfaq, today you look like Amresh Puri. Right, I'm going to have to Google who that is afterwards. Hello from the Netherlands, says Frederick. Gosh, so many. Right, I don't want to be rude and ignore any of them. Let's go through them really, really quickly. Rizwan says, Rasasi Ashar, incense smoky, discontinued now, but best for me. Okay. Shimon, my favorite is Passage d'Enfer. Hmm. Hmm. The incense is fleeting, but it comes back again and again. Hmm. Hmm. Ashfaq says, you need to acquire solid water. I'm not paying tons of money for old batches of solid water. Um, that He's referring to a gel I used to use, by the way, in case you're wondering. Uh, Liz says hello. Another hello from the Netherlands. That's quite a look, Mr. Persilay, says Andrew Richards. Oh, so you don't talk to me in real life, but you, but you tune into YouTube and communicate with me, Mr. Andrew Richards. Right. Q George says, favourites are Cardinal by Healy, Oliban by Faden, and uh, La Fume by Miller Harris. Catherine, I love Passage d'Enfer as well. Hmm. <laughs> uh... Teresa says, hello from Switzerland. Oh, we may be visiting Switzerland in, in our, in our whistle stop tour of incense perfumes. Avignon remains my favorite incense, but I'm always open to new ones, says Cousin73. My favorite incense perfume is Ginsense by Oliver and Company, for, says Serapio. I don't know that one. Pine Rock says, hello from London. Eve Spider smells, right now I've been obsessed with the frankincense in Lyric Woman. Ah, don't blame you. Uh, Val Zalel says, hi from California. Ah, thank you. I was hoping West Coast would tune in today because one of the reasons why I've chosen this slot is for the West Coast of, of North America. So thank you, California. Um, uh, Unum Loves is a close second. Floating Man Afternoon, I love the shirt. Thank you. I should actually say that this is, actually, that this is a long quarter, right? I'm not going to stand up and show it off, but, but this goes all the way down to my knees. Uh, Ensemble Mythique says, uh, Pat Safong, I hope that's how you say your name. Rizvan says, 47 chats live as of now. This may be the highest so far, I guess. I, do you know, I don't actually even look half the time. I, I'm, I've, I can see 50, but yeah, maybe this is a good time for people. Or maybe everybody's just wanting to tune in about incense perfumes. Ashfaq says, favorite incense perfumes. Am sombre en son chypre from Sultan Pasha. I mainly burn egg or wood chips, frankincense resins for my incense fix. Sometimes Bahor. Yeah, we like to do that as well. The list of incense perfumes is endless. Floating Man says Unum Labs is up there with my number one incense. I need to try this. I don't know that one. Hello from Karachi, says Shahan. Must be a bit late there, no? Or maybe not. Maybe it's like, what is it in Karachi? Nine o'clock? Ten o'clock? Hello from Sweden. Yes, I agree that Labs is top notch. 
Uh, we call them Punjabi here in Bangladesh, says Ashfaq. What, as in these? Okay. Um, Bill says, I thought it had ended and was ready to watch the replay. No, we are live. Um, smash that like button, people, says Ashfaq. Yeah, and hello from Puerto Rico, says David Santiago. Phew, I don't think I've ever actually had to read that many comments. So, and, and we need to we need to get this done in under an hour, people. Number one, because like I said before, I think YouTube doesn't like it when videos, live videos go on for over an hour, then the upload thing starts getting really funny. Number two, because an hour with me is plenty of time. And number three, because at the top of the hour, so that's going to be 6 p.m. UK time, uh, you all need to head over to the Instagram channel of the Perfume Society. Okay, I'm sure most of you follow the Perfume Society on Instagram anyway, but you need to go to them when this is finished because they are going to be doing a live interview with none other than Captain Kirk himself, Francis Kirkjo. Um, I won't be able to watch live because I've got to go and do something else after this is over, but I've, I've sent a few questions in advance and hopefully they'll be able to ask the question the, one, of, one of the questions that I've asked. The interview is going to be conducted by Joe Fairley, one of the co-founders of the Perfume Society. So you've got a double whammy of perfume today. When this is over, head on over to the Perfume Society Instagram. Of course, if you're watching the recording, then I'm really, really sorry, but it probably means that the interview is gone because that's the thing about Instagram interviews. They only stick around Instagram videos. They only stick around for 24 hours and then they go away. But if you can catch it live, then please do so. Um, and we seriously, seriously need to move on. Okay. So, let us do, 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 do... I don't want to do an outlier just yet. Well, th this one's been mentioned a few times by people uh, already. So let's do this. Let's do Passage d'Enfer. Are we allowed to ask annoying questions, says Ashfaq? You're allowed to ask annoying questions as long as I'm also allowed to ignore annoying questions. <laughs> because, because if you ask too many and I get sidetracked, we are not going to be done within the hour because we've only done one perfume and it's 17 minutes already. We may have to do some very, very quickly. This is Passage d'Enfer. Oh, and Persolace has just remembered something. He's, he's going to be really annoying. This is here, by the way, Sahara Noir from Tom Ford from a few years ago. This is here so we can sort of just pay homage and, and lament the fact that we have lost Sahara Noir really, really gorgeous incense perfume. I'm really hoping that one day the people at Tom Ford will bring it back as a, as a private blend because it, it's just so good. So that's here because, because it's no longer with us. But Passage d'Enfer. I, I nearly didn't include this. I nearly included something else from L'Artisan Parfumeur. But when I looked through the list, had I included, had I not included this one and another one from L'Artisan, I would have had three perfumes by the same perfumer, which in itself isn't a problem because the perfumer in question actually is a, is a real master of um, incense. But I thought, oh, is this, is this a bit mean? And then I also looked at the list and I thought, wow, I haven't got a single incense perfume by a woman, which I kind of thought was interesting. So because a few people mentioned this today, you've mentioned it now. So I think I'm kind of, and, and I love it anyway, uh, I thought I'd include this um, by Olivia Giacobetti, uh, came out in 1999, Passage d'Enfer, and you can just about make out there that it has a kind of sub name, which I don't think is used anymore in the current packaging. It's Passage d'Enfer au Dansant. And somebody, I forget who it was, was it Shimon? Absolutely nailed it when he said, assuming it was Shimon, that this is a really interesting incense perfume because it is beautifully, gorgeously quiet um, to, the, to the extent that you sort of think that actually it, it doesn't last very long. And that's why I don't reach for it as often as I do some of my other favourite incense perfumes. But it's really, really deceptive. It is actually ever-present and it lasts for a terrifically long time, but just hovering in the background. Um, and that in itself is an interesting technical achievement. Plus, another reason why I had to include it is because it would have been scandalous, really, really um, at completely out of order to not include Olivia Giacobetti in this list because she is so fantastic. Uh, with incense and in in the brand that she, that she created, you know, which her own brand called Yunks, um, 
she she played with the incense note herself a lot. So it would it would have been really really long not to have wrong not to have um, included her here. This is this I always read this as as, as a fairly sweet um, incense. It has the mineralic notes, but maybe not so much of that sort of sharp citrus at the top. There is still that kind of flintiness about it, but it isn't it isn't woody. It isn't dusty in the same way that this is. So with this, I never think um, I, I, I don't somehow think church. I think more of the, the the cocooning, the the comforting, the velvety feel that you you get from um, from incense. But maybe not so much the kind of mind um, expanding quality. Um, but 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 absolutely, you know, wonderful, wonderful stuff. And I'm very very pleased that Latizon have included it in their current range. I'm so neat to gonna have to go through quickly through these. Let's see what comments I've missed. Uh, uh, Andy says, hello from Edinburgh. Do you get an animalic note from Bois d'Anson? To an extent, yes, I suppose so. I understand some people do, but I think of incense fragrances as the other end of the spectrum. David says, thank you so much for these live videos. Thank you for watching. This is what makes them fun. And we're at 56. Maybe I need to do more at this time. Um, Ashfaq says, plus I wear agar wood oils neat while burning some agar wood chips. Very meditative. David says, I'm wearing Garla Naama in your honour. Thank you very much. That's referring to a video I did a little while ago. Um, uh, wait, people call him Captain Kirk, says Val Zalel. Actually, I was going to say, if any of you guys o go over to the uh, Perfume Society Instagram after this, make sure that you say that Persele sent you, okay? Just do me a favour and do that. Um, uh, Dream of Me No More has, has tuned in, and as Ashfaq says, you've been missed. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm so sorry I didn't buy Sahara Noir when I had the chance. Yeah, well, you're not having this one. Um... Floating Man, the scent of the day, a lovely Sri Lankan oil called Sigiriya from Imperial Oud. Sounds nice. Uh, Dream of Me No More says, the perfume exhibition at the Courthold a few years back was very incense, Dusha for styly biased. Hmm, funny you should mention him. I'm surprised you didn't smell Unum Labs. It's what they used to scent the Pope's robes, says Cos. Really? Ooh. Now, now you're talking. Something for me to track down. Fane, or Fane says, Hi, I discovered your channel a few months ago. Very glad I can see you live. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. Floating Man, thanks to Alpha Rom on Base Notes for a lot of incense recommendations. Serapio says, What's the difference between incense and frankincense? No, the, in perfumery, they're totally interchangeable. We should be saying frankincense. We should be saying olibanum, which is, of course, the name of the oil. Laurie says, So grateful to finally catch you live from San Diego. West, West, no, hang on, San Diego? Yes, my American geography. No, that is California, right? San Diego, California. Yeah, okay. Ugh. I should know that. That's really bad that I don't. Um, Peggy says, uh, Fane says, is it like libanum incense? Yes, absolutely. Peggy says, Courtesan by Worth has a sweet incense note, sadly also discontinued now. Um, I missed a few comments there, no. Uh, Healy, Cardinal, Healy or Sacre, Tower Incense Extreme and Tower's Inc Tower Incense Rosé all have four-star blessings from Luca Turin in his books. We may be smelling one of those in a minute. Vlad Vladimir says, me too, scent of the day, Garlin Chamade. Oh, you smell really good. Daniel says, greetings from LA. First time watching you live. Many thanks for providing solace during these dark days. D d sincerely, truly, honestly, in the most heartfelt possible way, it is the least I can do. I'm so, so touched that, that, that you know, that you would even say that, that this provides any kind of solace, but I get just as much from you, if not more, than you get from me. Um, and and if if these videos can put a smile on your face for even just like a minute a day, then then that makes me feel fantastic that I can do that. But it's really, 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 really very kind of you to say that. Really, really touching. Um, Vladimir says, you are a true whack pack. <sighs> I'm being slow again. I don't understand that. Uh, Ashfaq says... Um, Anything effectively, incense is effectively anything that gives you that incense -y smell. Eve Spider smells, San Diego is California. Phew. <laughs> it's okay, I'm sure many Americans aren't familiar with geography in other countries. I'm Californian myself. I kind of thought San Diego, California. You always say the two together. Don't you? Agnieszka says, Kenzo Flower Oriental is a very nice incense. Ah, interesting. 
Vladimir, do you like Robert Piguet Casbah? I do. I haven't smelt it for a while. It's not in today's list, I can tell you that. I will be missing these regular fix when things get normal, Ashfaq says. Well, we'll I'll still try to do a lot. Um, Andy Goring says, is Mark Buxton in the list, I wonder? Hmm. Hmm. Right, we should move on. This is bad, people. We need to do some really, really quickly. Um, because I've only done two, and I am finishing at the top of this hour. Right, we mentioned this one, so let's do it. Mark Buxton, somebody said, here you go. Next on the list, had to be here, is Two Man by Comme des Garçons, uh, which was, I'm looking at my list, released in 2004. This is, this is a, 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 one of my favourites of all time. You know, I, I did my uh, list of uh, top 10 personal favourites the other day. On, on, on other days, this would be in the top 10 as well. Um, Madame Persolais really, really, really loves this, really loves this one. I mean, how, how can we, where can I put this one? Because of course this is one of those annoying pebble bottles. Let's pop that there. You probably won't be able to see that if I do that. Or no, maybe you can, just looking there. Oh, this is, this, this is, this is incense, but this is, what's really, really fascinating about this is that it's incense just as it's, just as it's stopped burning. It's got those fantastic snuffed candle notes or matches, you know, I love the smell of matches as they go out. Um, and this really is, this really is a perfume for a darkened room, you know, with just one candle burning. Um, oh, this, this, you know, for for some for for a for a broadcast that's meant to be about meditative, contemplative perfumes, I feel like I've been really, really manically trying to get lots and lots of stuff in. But this one immediately just makes you slow down. And 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 this is this has also got that nicely done tangy feel, slightly, slightly citrusy feel that um, I personally adore. But here it's maybe a cedary quality that's interesting as well that's been emphasized. And of course cedar has a sort of citrusy, tangy quality to it too. Um, but there's something about the use of the aldehydes, there's something of the about the use of the woods that brings out that gorgeous, gorgeous, just snuffed, just just blown out candle note. Um, which, which which is, it is actually divine in in you know in the in the in the best possible sense. If 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 incense over the centuries has been used in order to bring us closer to the divine or to God, Creator, the Almighty, then then two, comme des garçons, two man, um, kind of takes you in that direction. Let's do another one very very quickly before I look at the comments. We will be coming back to Comme des Garçons later. You know how we'll be coming back to Comme des Garçons, you can guess. Um, but let's do let's do one of the outliers now. Let's do one of the ones that maybe you are not expecting so much because I want to get up to four before we get to the half hour mark. And I would like to present to you from somebody you may have heard of called Monsieur Jean-Claude Elena. I would like to present uh, Un Jardin sur le Nil from Hermès. Not the first perfume that comes to your mind when you think of an incense perfume. And in fact, in the Chandler Burr book, which was called The Perfect Scent, really, really great book where he parallels the creation of Jardin sur le Nil with uh, uh, the first Sarah Jessica Parker perfume, which turned out to be lovely, right? Um, the the, whole, the the story behind this was that it which is the inspiration was mangoes and all of that sort of thing but the next time you wear it if you don't already think of it as an incense perfume the next time you wear it or maybe after this broadcast is over if you've got this the bottle in your collection dig it out and actually try and think to yourself okay i'm going to get incense out of this and you may be pleasantly surprised it's it's got it's got the gorgeous um, citrus note, a sort of grapefruity note. It's got all of those sunshiny elements in it. Um, it it's got that tart, fruity, maybe mangoey note, which you know, which 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 it's meant to have. But I insist that there is a really really clear. This is so good. This for me, for, for many years now, has been the, the scent of summer. And um, last year, I forgot somehow to, to take it with me. So I had to go, I had to go like to the 
first branch of Mariano or wherever, whatever, because we were in France and I, and I had to buy it. Um, this, this has got, this has got the, the cleanest, most pristine, somehow purest incense note, which, which has all the smoke taken away, all the dust taken away. And I think because it's so closely linked with the grapefruitiness, which at the moment actually is making me think of things like terre, terre d'armes, and I never really thought of that before. Mainly because I think I you know, normally smell this on myself, on skin, very rarely on paper. But that incense note is so well done, so beautifully, beautifully done. Right, Persolase, you're being rude and ignoring the nice people's comments. Um, so, uh, where have I got to? Uh, Mr. Kjelkvist says Montal full incense is also nice. Haven't smelled that one for a long time. Ashfak says, I bet there are some BDs and some leathery incense perfumes. Hang on. Uh, BDs, I can't remember. Uh, Rezar says, hey there, hi. Two man, such a great blend, says Vladimir Masterful. Absolutely agree. Reza says, just tuned in. Gucci Puram 2 is very relaxing for me. Fair enough. I still have a few drops of that somewhere. I like that one as well. Nice shirt, says Abdul Sarkis. Thank you very much. I get that with YSL Opium, says Poesia28. I like Ambra Aurea and Fiori D'Ambra from Profumum Roma as well, says Ashmark. And they've got a good olivinum, haven't they? Uh, Dream of me no more. Yeah, that's fab. Comme des garçons, two man. I find, say, Trahi too, too heavy. Now, I wondered about things like Trahi for today, but much as I love... Um, oh, Bertrand Duchefort. Okay, sorry. Much as I love uh, Nila Vermeer's perfumes... They're so rich um, that, the, 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 and of course they feature incense notes, but I don't go to any of them when I want an incense hit. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of actually a, another video, a sort of best of video, that will probably feature a Neela Vermeer creation, but, but not incense. So no, we're not going to get anything from Neela today. Um, Shimon says you should try using Papier d'Armenie. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Vladimir says Timbuktu has a great incense blend too. Yes, but again, I don't go to Timbuktu for incense. To me, that's all about the Cypriol um, and the vetiver. So you won't be seeing Timbuktu here today, which may shock some people. Uh, Floating Man says an outlier indeed. Yeah, well, Timbuktu is a masterpiece, absolutely. Dream of me no more. Avignon is the scent that Sarah Jessica Parker used to layer on, which she wanted to base the original perfume, talking of that book. Is it? Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, Vladimir says, do you know any other Hermes incense fragrance? Ooh, I'd have to think about that one. Um, what was the first perfume to use incense, says Sniffy Sniff? Uh, pass. We need to turn to a history. I'd need to consult some notes. Sur Anil performs better in heat, says Peggy. The cold deadens the notes. Most Jean-Claude Elena perfumes do, don't they? Um, smell bent incensed was very good, says Abdel Sarkis. Sur Anil with incense? I am shocked, says Agnieszka. <laughs> there you go. Uh, uh, Eve Spider Smell says, uh, yes, oh, talking to Peggy, that's fine. Uh, Dream of me no more. I like Mi Reglantine by Hermes. Not full on incense, but very nice. Uh, Shimon says, BDs are raw tobacco cigarettes that are sold in India. Have I missed something? I know what BDs are. Were we talking about BDs? I can't remember now. Um, another fantastic offering is Silphium by Storus. Guggen, says Mr. Kjelkvist. Fantastic olibanum and geranium combination. Have you tried Gavali perfume, says Reza? They are a local UAE brand with a lot of incense perfumes, oils and bahurs. No, but I may have done because I was actually supposed to be in the UAE now, but um, plans had to be changed for various reasons that you will be aware of. Good evening from India, says May. Thanks for the video, Persolais. Love from India. Which part of India? Don't just say India. It's such a massive country. And uh, this, is, this is my tribute to two years ago when I was in India and having the most wonderful time. Uh, Ashfaq says, I forgot to mention incense from Sultan Pasha, his ode to Norma Kamali's 1985 classic, uh, and so on. Vladimir says, everybody smash that like button. <laughs> Are you doing it? Because I've only got like one like, but it's probably because I haven't refreshed. Uh, Geranium pour Monsieur by Frederick Mal has a fantastic subtle incense base, says Yannick. Yeah, makes sense actually, because then of course that led to Portrait of a Lady. Right, uh, Oh, okay. Confusion about BD. 
this is this is going to make no sense to people watching the recording. If you're watching the recording and you're still here, thank you very much. Just but switch on the live chat, okay? Because then it will make sense. You can always for for those of you who are not aware, you can always have the live chat running alongside the video. So just just look somewhere on your screen to to activate the live chat option. We need to move on. This one has been mentioned already, and uh, we need to do it now. And it is uh, incense extreme or incense extreme from Andy Tower from Tower Perfumes. Again, I debated about whether I should um, include this one or incense rosé, which I love as well. But I thought, okay, if this is meant to be about you know incense, incense perfumes, then let's do this one. Um, this is this is oh we need we need to like rearrange the furniture here a little bit now. Will you see that if I do that? This is another one that gives you straight up incense, but interesting comparing it with the Armani because I find I find that the tower lasts longer than the Armani or lasts or lasts more prominently, develops more prominently. I'm always more aware of wearing the tower on myself than I am of the Armani. But maybe maybe there's just a slightly more marked sense of heaviness to it than with the Armani. So the Armani floats up into the ether, you know, like tendrils of smoke, whereas, whereas the tower feels as though it's, 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 you know, sort of burning on, on, on a hot coal like the, like the incense burner that I've got here. Um, I love them both and they, 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 they create slightly different effects. I think the Armani maybe is more meditative, whereas the tower, again, is more comforting, like I was saying with the, with, um, with the Passage d'Enfer. Um, but, but, I, but I, I do still, I absolutely love it. And I, I, it's, it's, it's long been one of my favorite Andy Tower creations. Uh, comments. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Suggestions for a newbie incense. Can't do Unum Laughs, Casbah or Rien, for example. Floating Man says Jubilation XX, uh, Jubilation 25, maybe, Rachel, by Amouage. Hmm. Q George says, I prefer Incense Flash to Incense Extreme. Ah, fair enough. Good, good call there. Ashfaq says, have you tried premium incense sticks from Shoyedo and Yamada Matsu? They have some beautiful offerings. I think when we went to Japan a few years ago, I did actually get some from Shoyedo. I do have some uh, Japanese incense sticks at home. Their, their incense is out of this world. And the way they use oud as well, is, is as, as, as I'm sure you know, is extraordinary. Uh, Reza says, are you wearing a kurta? Yes. Well spotted. Is that okay? <laughs> Lynn Smell says, I miss Mirra. Uh, from uh, Aqua de Palma already. It had a really short life as it was released in 2018 is now discontinued. Yeah, I don't think it did terribly well. Uh, Frederick Mann, Portrait of a Lady, Great Incense too, says Vladimir. Yes, absolutely, but I don't, you know, go to that for incense. I might go to that for rose patchouli. And we've mentioned it, so I've done five, but we've got just over 20 minutes to go. So somebody's mentioned this one, and I think we need to go and do that here. Look, we had... Oh, do you realize what I've done? This is really, really bad. Okay, let's do the bottle. The Persilase has messed up. This is the joys of live TV because this was supposed to be Jubilation 25 composed by composed by um, Bertrand Duchafort. But what Persilase has done is he's brought... You can't see that. He's brought Gold Man. <laughs> this is when you try to get ready to agree. Of course, Gold Man has a Really, really great incense note as well. Oh God, I feel like such an idiot now. I can, I can mention it. Never mind, I can mention it. Jubilation, uh, Jubilation Twenty Five, was the first duo uh, of perfumes that uh, came out from Amouage when Christopher Chong was the creative director. So that means that it came out in two thousand and seven. There was, there was a Jubilation Twenty Five, as in just the the Roman numeral. No. The Arabic numerals, I should say, two five, and there was a jubilation XXV, the Roman numeral numerals, and it's this one, the one that came in the man's bottle. That's why I was confused. I should have realised actually, I don't have a hundred mils of that one. I've only got the fifty mils. Never mind. Obviously, trying to um, get ready too quickly, but I've worn it lots and lots of times, and I'm, 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 I know why I love it. Um, pr please bring it while we wait. 
no, I'm not going to leave you with a blank screen while I go and get it. Uh, <laughs> nice suggestion, but I you know, just imagine staring at this empty chair here while I go. You just want you just want to see the culture, don't you? Um, the that one. It's a shame I can't I can't smell it now. I mean, that one is probably out of the ones that we've got here today. Uh, the, the 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 most the the busiest of the of the perfumes, um, because it has that beautiful um, silver Omani frankincense note to it. But there are lots and lots of other things going on as well. Lots of Devana wood, which is of course a Bertrand du Chaufour signature. So do seek that one out. Sorry guys, I'm, I may maybe if I sort of go and re-smell it. I may put some, uh, may put a sort of a few reflections or thoughts on it in the video description below. Joys, joys of live TV, right? Um, uh, Ashmark says, I made my own temperature adjustable incense heater. Now, even a little amount of agar wood chips incense sticks last very long. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, Ashfaq says, please, no, I've had that one. Any Givenchy Ensemble today? Uh, no. Vladimir says, is that a Polish folklore shirt? It's nice, thank you very much. But no, this is completely Indian. And as far as I know, I have no Indian blood in me whatsoever. So cultural appropriation or cultural homage. Um, Reza says, I'm sure you picked up frankincense and myrrh from the Dera market or Sharjah Souk. I, I would have done at some point. Dream of me. So my incense, you very definitely mean alibinum rather than understanding it as a general term for burnt wood concoctions. Yes, I, I do mean alibinum. And Lynn is laughing away because Persele has brought the wrong perfume. That's the first time I've done that, isn't it? Never mind. Not sure if I missed it, but Journeyman has a great smoky incense and Ashfaq is smiling. Fine, but you know what? That was actually a good sort of time killer because we've got we've got four to go and I feel a little bit calmer now. We've got 19 minutes to do and four to go. Um, let's do... Let's do this one because this because this shows how the, the different ways in which you can treat incense. This one was one of the ones about which I was less certain in terms of including. One of the ones that I am denied about. You can see it's uh, Love Froide from Serge Lutens came out in uh, 2012, composed by Christopher Sheldrake. Uh, a few reasons why I debated. I wondered about including this one or the uh, Land de Verre, which uh, was came out a couple of years later. Um, but I wear Land de Verre more, um, but I guess it will probably be fair to say that Le Froid has a stronger incense note, while the Land de Verre has a, has a stronger sort of aldehydic chemically note, which a lot of people hated, but I actually quite like. But this is um, this is interesting because it's incense as a sort of coolant fluid. Um, well, let's put the embarrassing gold man away. Um, it it really is uh, what what it says, in in the sense that it is it is a cooling water. And and of course, incense does have a cooling aspect to it. You know, if, if it were a spice, which obviously it isn't, but if it were a spice, you would imagine it being a cold spice like uh, like like cardamom. But in a lot of the incense compositions, it's the combinations with, with the woods, with things like vetiver, with things like sandalwood, um, cedar wood, that, that gives it that, that touch of meditative warmth. Here, Lutens and Sheldrake obviously just thought, no, Let's let's imagine incense blown on an Alaskan wind or an Icelandic wind, you know, something along those lines. Um, with with lots of really well handled aldehydes at the top. You know, if you could imagine frozen candles, candles that are frozen and yet manage to be lit at the same time, which of course is a physical impossibility, but you can picture it. Um, that's what this always smells like. So it's got the sort of snuffed candle feel of Comme des Garçons to Man, but as though the candles have been blown out in a freezer um, or smoke running through, you know, liquid nitrogen, all of that sort of thing. And it is curious and it, it does maybe become a little bit too musky as it develops and maybe a little bit too harsh chemically, but... Um, but I, but I, I enjoy it, and I think as as 
a way of doing something different with incense, it's it's genuinely interesting um, and and worth your worth your time and attention. Uh, some more comments. Uh, Daisy Persilles, I mean it as a compliment. <laughs> That's fine. Um, Somebody retracted a message, I wonder why. Vladimir says, I need a two-hour show and a top 20. This is fun. I'm enjoying it too, but it's like becoming manic, keeping up with your comments. Not that I'm complaining, but maybe maybe we've we've hit on a, a good time for doing these videos. Who knows? Frederick says, what are your thoughts on Ensemble Flamboyant by Goutal? To me, it, it veers very piney and cold. Yeah, loads and loads of people love um, uh, that particular one. But I'm not crazy about the dry down, which is why you won't see it here. A few other ones, by the way, that nearly made it a, a really famous one. Mes de Minuit from Etro. What's the one from Jovoy called? Is it the Liturgy of the Hours? L'Or Mysterieuse from Cartier. I couldn't have shared that one with you anyway because I don't have a sample. But hey, I could have just bought something else like and said that it was that. So there are lots of good ones out there. Um, Maria says, love this one. Such a fantastic hot cold combo. I guess you mean the Lutins. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Peggy says, really hate the new uh, Serge Lutin style bottles. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a huge fan either. Have you tried La Mire by Serge Lutins? I've tried it and I've got a bottle, but that, yeah, I, I love it. I, I think it's a fantastic way of um, handling aldehydes again, but, but not for an incense hit. Uh, uh, love how you described that. Incense blown by the Arctic wind, says Eve Spider Smells. Thank you very much. Came to me right then. You you inspired me. Um, Joao says, Neil Vermeer creations, Ashoka. How's the incense act on this? I absolutely adore Ashoka, as many of you will know, but for me, Ashoka is more about the iris and the uh, the sandalwood. So, with less than 15 minutes to go and three perfumes to go, I just wanted to make this observation, and I have no idea what this means. I told you at the beginning of the video something that I would say when we got to about this point. I was looking at the list of perfumes that I chose. And the oldest one, in a way, I'll explain what I mean in a sec. The oldest one is from 1999, and almost all of them are from the first decade of this century. So, like, we've got 2004, 2008, 2007, 2002, 2005, another 2007, and then there's a, there's a, there's a 2018 coming up, and uh, Lofroide is 2012. And I, that had never, ever occurred to me. And I thought, wow, but how come there aren't any older ones in there? Is that because in the past, incense as a sort of single note in itself wasn't really made the, the, the highlight of a perfume or, this, or the, there wasn't a sort of showcase of it? Is there something about um, extraction techniques that meant that incense was able to be made more prominent. For example, I know that in the Andy Tower, it uses uh, carbon dioxide, a CO2 extract of, of a very, very high quality grade of um, incense oil, alibinum. Um, so if any of you have ex an explanation out there, you know, leave a comment or I'm either right now or after the broadcast. I thought, why is it that so many of my favorite incense perfumes are from the first decade of um, this century? Um, and, and I was really racking my brains trying to think of older, pure incense perfumes, um, and I couldn't come up with very many. I mean, there's lots of perfumes that have an incense note, um, but yeah, interesting. Dream of Me No More says, are you sure it wasn't the invention of ISO E Super that allowed incense to be um, tamed? But yeah, an interesting idea, Some, something, something that we ought to ask somebody. Right, we have had one from Michel Almarac. We need to do this really, really quickly. Let's have another one from Michel Almarac. This is from his own brand, uh, Parlement de Parfum, and this is Papyrus Oud 71. So you will notice that it doesn't actually mention incense in its name. And uh, I have said this on these videos lots and lots of times before, but it's worth repeating. This is like a sort of update on his own Gucci pour homme from the Tom Ford era. Um, so, and, it, and it is kind of like Gucci pour homme, but made warmer with the addition of the oud note. But one of the reasons why I love Gucci pour homme and this is because of its handling of incense. It's a really, really gorgeously ecclesiastical incense. It's got the sort of amber in, going in one direction, the cedar in another direction, uh, real pencil shaving cedar, um, pink pepper, and the incense. And this is... This is, 
You know, if you wanted to, if you wanted to steal some furniture from a church and and make your house, you know, use some of the gorgeous furniture that you find in some churches. I mean, so pop into a Renaissance church somewhere in northern Italy and steal some furniture. You would you would want it to smell like this. You would want you would want the incense that has been burned in the church to be infused with the wood and smell like this. Um, just heavenly, really, really, really heavenly, and really uplifting. This is probably probably the happiest and most elegant of the incenses. A lot of the other ones are, as I say, you, you know, been using that word meditative, but this one is really, really fantastic. We will move on. I'll, I'll look at the comments in a minute. We will move on to the second of the outliers, and this is the one which is kind of an old perfume. This particular formulation is from 2007, but it's based on a perfume from the 20s. Uh, and again, a lot of you may not have thought of this one, but it is the Eau de Toilette, which you can't get anymore, of number 22 from Chanel. And I maybe a lot of you are now going to go, what the hell, what does he mean? But if we accept that the aldehydes are doing a lot of the supporting work of the incense uh, in Le Froide, Number 22 is like a super aldehydic comp. It's like, it's like number five, but with the aldehydes cranked up to, to insane levels. Um, and this is another one like, uh, like the, the Jubilation, which is the sort of most composed, rich perfume. But you get, you get past the aldehydes, you've got the floral notes, but what you are also getting is a really, really fantastic, cool, pristine, sharp incense note. Um, probably the most floral incense that I've got here. So, you know, um, Jardin sur le Nil was the, was the fruity incense, the sort of mango, tart, citrusy, grapefruit incense. The other ones are maybe more traditional woody incenses. This is the most floral one, but when you wear it, the incense note is really, really prominent and really, really beautiful. There's this story as well, wasn't there, that Ernest Beau, when he um, uh, was composing number five, w may have taken inspiration from the Northern Lights. And in the same way that I sort of said, you know, Arctic wind candles burning in sub-zero temperatures, number 22 has got that feel to it as well. But the floral aspect makes it makes it warmer, makes it richer. I, I adore this. I like the current Eau de Parfum as well, but the Eau Toilette, I think, has the edge. What I was very curious about, this bottle is stored in the dark in a cool place, but it's gone a really, really rich colour. I'm sure it wasn't as dark as that when I got this bottle. Right, with one to go, you all know what the last one is because it's the obvious one that we haven't done yet. I saved the obvious one for the end. But let me look at some comments. Thank you very much for all these comments, by the way. I've really, really appreciated the interaction we've had today. Uh, da, 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 da. So, where did I get to? Tomasz says, holy smoke, hello from Katowice. I really like dabbing my wrists with Serge Routin's Lode Pipe. Yeah, it's, that was the one I wasn't so crazy about, but fair enough. Whenever I want to smell the smen smell at centre of the country, I don't find it plebeian, though. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, <coughs> Floating Man says, found Arabi too Christmassy. Oh, fine, we're, we're, we're on Serge Lutin's. Uh, Lynn's Smell says, the phasic fashion of materials and new materials available. This is on why so many of these ones are from the early part of the 21st century. Ashfaq says, subscribed. Oh, they're talking to Dream of Me No More. Bibit says, my favourite is Passage d'Enfer. There you go. Marta says it took me a lot of time to accustom to its rawness, but Lot Trois from Diptyque is a great old school incense. Okay, I don't remember that one. Dream of Me No More. I think there's also some alignment of incense perfumes with changing classical musical styles. It's the Arvo part. It's the Arvo part of perfume. That's an interesting comparison. Okay, I will have to give that some thought. Uh, Reza says Garla en Somitique has ambergris, but does it have incense? Yes, I'm sure it does, but that's again quite a rich one. Quite a Quite a sort of rough, rich one. Um, Ashfaq says, interesting time to suggest church furniture, Mr. P. Why? <laughs> oh, stealing, that is. No. Evo says, interesting observation. The word perfume comes from the Latin perfumum, meaning through smoke, yes. So maybe incense might be the oldest perfume note after all. And Peggy, when she saw number 22, went, yes. 
Uh, Dream of Me No More says, hurrah, hoped you would mention this. Glad it made the list. 22. Lots of lots of people going yes for 22. I love it as well. Ashfaq says, number 22 in the morning, number five in the evening. Fair enough. Uh, Dream of Me No More says number 22, Comme de Garçon 2, Love Froid and La Mire all seem related perfumes. Well, yeah, absolutely. Imagine Mr. P is stealing church furniture wearing couche du, du, du table. <laughs> yeah, you just picture that. Andy says, I got a sample of this based on your uh, GPH comments. I'm a huge fan of that perfume too. Um, oh, Gucci pour homme. sorry, being slow. How does it compare to the Bentley, do you think? Ah, the Bentley, now that's an interesting one. Um, the... Yeah, the Bentley is great too, but, but I, I prefer this one. And Andy again, P.S. Love Papyrus Oud too. My wife enjoys Milky Musk from that brand. Yeah, that's an interesting brand. Right, so with just a few minutes to go, saving the obvious one for last, my favourite incense perfume when I just want a pure incense hit, when I really, really want to think that I am surrounded by the essence of Catholic Church, it had to be. It had to be Bertrand du Chauffour's... Um, uh, Avignon from the Comme des Garçons Incense series. This was released in, 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 I'm looking, uh, in 2002, as was the whole series. Lots of people have their own favourites from the Incense series. A lot of people like Kyoto. Uh, there was also Jaisalma, I think, and Wazazat and um, Zagorsk. I think those were the ones. But this is the one that does it for me. This really is the, the, the most note perfect very cold austere perfume though do you think so I, I i don't know i think i think because for me it makes that instant association with with church um i don't i don't think of it as cold i mean this is one day i would love to sit Bertrand du Chauffour down and just say what is it about this one that seems to just hit the right notes in the way the other, that the other ones can't quite manage. I mean, I, I, I love them all. I love the Armani, I love the Tower, and I go to them for different reasons. But this has just got everything in the right place. You can, you can see the pews, you can see the, 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 the sunlight streaming in through the stained glass windows, you can see the, the, the dust floating in the sunlight, you can see the tendrils of smoke that have floated up. But what's interesting, is that this never makes me think of mass. This is a this is a quiet church. So maybe this is a church like half an hour after mass has finished. So it's empty, but it's still open. You can still go in. The sunlight is still st streaming through. You get the sense that there were people in there, that there was a whole con congregation in there. And the smell of the incense is still sticking around. But you have got the entire place to yourself. And you can just sit down and shut your eyes and think about, you know, the, the great beyond. It's j just beautiful, must be, must be one of the finest things that Duchoffel has ever given us. And and another one, like Passage d'Enfer, does that, that does this um, interesting thing of you think it's gone, but then it suddenly comes back. I would always spray a little of this on fabric if I'm wearing it as well. So if I'm wearing a scarf or something, I'll spray a little bit on my scarf. Right, so thank you very much for, for putting up with that. Thank you very much for putting up with the, with the wrong amouage as well. Thank you so much for the, for the comments. Really, really appreciated the interaction today. We have got under two minutes to go. So very, very quickly, uh, Agnieszka says, sprayed sur le nil, still searching for incense. <laughs> well, I don't know, maybe you won't, but to me, like once I saw it, I just couldn't stop seeing it. Uh, Floating Man says he loves Comme de, Comme de Garçon. Chang, uh, Chang Liu also says he loves the Milky Musk of Parle Moi. Never tried any Comme de Garçon, says Reza. Oh, you've got a treat in store. Hard to find the right occasion to wear it. Vladimir says it had to be the true Pope of fragrance, Avignon. Absolutely agree. It's warm and a bit citrusy, totally. Hello, I really want to know your opinion about Annie Goutal perfume, Rose Pompon, please. Oh, we don't have time to do that one today, sorry. Do you have any other ones from the Incense series yet to try anything? I have Kyoto. I quite like Kyoto. I prefer this. Poesia sounds, uh, says, sounds too tempting. Catherine Galanis, my Bois d'Azile has changed colour as well. Interesting. Dream of me no more. Great choices. Maria says, thank you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you for covering my favourite type of perfume, says Ashfaq. And thank you for the video, says Raf. Phew. So don't forget, uh, in just over a minute, um, on the uh, per Perfume Society's Instagram channel, they're doing a live interview with Francis Cochillon. If you go there, say, Persolet's told, uh, told me to say hi. I will look at those comments that are coming through and, and answer them if I can. But I've got a few seconds to say, 
Thank you very much for tuning in. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Please consider supporting my work on Coffee. You will find the link below. Leave comments, ask questions, give me ideas for future uh, videos like this where we look at top tens. And thank you very, very much for the kind comments and the, and the fun interaction. Look after yourselves, be kind to each other, stay safe, and I will see you again soon. Phew! I'm off to meditate. Take care. Bye.